DNA studies on bronze age tarim mummies found in Xinjiang region of China revealed recently that not only were these people not descendants of Indo-Europeans that immigrated to the area, they may in fact be the ancestors of Native Americans. With genes that are shared between them, people living in Siberia and Native Americans, the Tarim mummies have been proven to be clearly related to these groups, according to a study that was published in the Nature's Journal. While scientists originally thought that these people may have come overland from the West, the DNA sequencing shows that they actually had origins near where they were found, in the desert of western China. Buried in boot-like wooden coffins with their graves at the Shiohi Cemetery marked by upright wooden stakes that resembles ours, the mummies were part of a unique culture. Their Bronze Age culture was not part of a remote branch of early Indo-Europeans, according to the research as reported in Life Science. The new DNA research bellies the nearly century-long theories regarding the origins of the prehistoric people who lived in the Tarim Basin. As recently as the year 2000, historians stated that there may have been at least two Caucasian groups into the Tarim Basin in the distant past. They associated these peoples with the Tokarian and Iranian Saka branches of the Indo-European language family, respectively. Many archaeologists believe that the mummified remains belong to the descendants of Indo-Europeans who had migrated to the region sometime before the year 2000 BC. However, now, researchers know beyond a shadow of a doubt that these people whose mummies were uncovered in the early 20th century were a genetically isolated group who apparently were not related to any nearby populations. Study co-author Christiana Warina, an anthropologist who teaches at Harvard and the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Human History in Germany, stated in an interview with Life Science, they have been so enigmatic. Ever since they were found almost by accident, they have raised so many questions. Because so many aspects of these people are either unique, puzzling, or contradictory. As so often happens with hard science, the news repents all what was previously almost taken for granted about the subject. Researchers admit that it turns out some of the leading ideas were incorrect, and now they have got to start looking in a completely different direction. Although the graves were found by a hunter in an area that is now sandy and arid, it was once verdant, perched along the banks of a river 4,000 years ago. Their wooden coffins are covered with cowhide, entombing the remains of the people for millennia after the climate changed to become much more arid. Once with a total of over 300 people, a number of the Bronze Age Cemetery's tombs had already been looted by grave robbers before it was discovered in the early 1900s. European explorers were the first to come upon the initial Tarim mummies in the Taklamakan desert of western China at that time, having what appeared to be red or fair hair and known Asian features. It was actually thought that these people were from the west. But the recent research on just the mummies that were found in Shohitom complex on the eastern edge of the Taklamakan shows that they indeed were not from far away although they remain in a distinct group genetically for some time. In another unique thread, some of the mummies had been found with pieces of cheese around their necks, perhaps signifying food that they would need as they journey through the afterlife, according to the report. Although some had originally thought that their origin was in Siberia and that they had spoken an early form of Tokarian, an Indo-European language spoken in the northern part of the region after the year 400 AD. That cannot be the case, according to these new DNA findings. Delta DNA from 13 of the oldest mummies from about 4,000 years before the present indicates that there was no genetic mixing with any nearby peoples. According to the author, Chung Gwang Jung, who is a population genetic at Seoul National University in South Korea, the researchers now state that the Tarim people descended from ancient North Eurasians, A.N.E., people from the Pleistocene era who had disappeared for the most part approximately 10,000 years ago, 
just after the end of the last ice age when glaciers were melting all over the northern hemisphere. Genes from these ANA individuals now exist only in the genomes of some present-day peoples, namely among indigenous people in Siberia and the Americas, according to the research. These were in the only mummies to have been found in western China. The new DNA research also looked at the genes of the Tarim mummies compared to those of the mummies from the same time that were discovered in the Zungarian region in the north of Xinjiang. However, this population lived on the other side of the imposing Tianshan mountain range, which divides the region into two. They discovered that the ancient Zungarian population, unlike the Tarim, who lived approximately 500 miles or 800 kilometers to the south, were descended from both the indigenous ANE people and the sheep heading peoples who lived in the Altai Cyan Mountains of southern Siberia called the Afanasivo. This later group of people had strong genetic links to the early Indo European Yamnaya peoples who lived in what is now southern Russia, according to this new research. They believe that migrating Afanasivo herders who may have been following their heads and migrated and mixed with local hunter gatherers in Zungaria. Meanwhile, the Tarim people retained their original ANE ancestry. The researchers speculated without certainty though that the harsh environment of the Tarim basin may have formed a barrier to gene flu. The Tarim basin already served as a crossroads of cultural exchange between the East and the West in the Bronze Age, the scientists state, and this would be the case for thousands of years into the future. The Tarim people were genetically isolated from their neighbors while culturally extremely well connected, they explained. Strikingly, they had adopted many of the practices that settled peoples already engaged in, including herding cattle, goats and sheep, and farming wheat, belly and millets, they concluded. Probably, such cultural elements were more productive in their local environments than hunting, gathering or fishing. The findings provide a strong case study showing that genes and cultural elements do not necessarily move together. Although surrounded by desert at the time, Warina explained that the Tarim lived along ancient rivers that brought vital water supplies to some part of the region, while the rest remained a desert. It was like a river oasis, she stated. Showing just this scenario was once the case, pieces of ancient fishing nets have been found at Tarim sites. Naturally, this also ties into their practice of burying people in boot-shaped coffins. These, along with the warlike pools that mark their graves, seem to have been created as an acknowledgement of the rivers that gave them life. Getting their waters from seasonal snow melt from the gigantic mountains nearby, the rivers often change course after especially heavy snowfalls during the winter time. The researchers concluded. When they did occur, the proceeds, the villages of the Tarim Basin would be basically cut off from their vital water supply. This very well may have been what caused the collapse of the culture in their area. Now, the region is almost all deserts. For more on videos like this, please subscribe to Ancient Insights. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. It will go a long way to help us. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.